to drag him out and thrash some sense into him. I believe I should re-interrogate a suspect. Ashton stops in front of this pub every afternoon to check on business rumors. Something of a bastard, Ashton. Told me he had a bit of jam on the side, if you know what I mean. Wife didn't know about it. Well, the bit of jam wants out, but he won't let her. That's the sort of fellow we're speaking of. As a matter of fact, I do carry a revolver at all times. It can be a dangerous neighborhood for a wealthy fella such as myself. This proves nothing. That was Ashton's doing. The man had it in for me. He paid workers to wreck my machines. Cost me a fortune. As long as he was around, I'd never prosper. I should go back and ask about this. been coming to me for years. He arrives precisely at one o'clock and leaves two minutes later. He takes a bluish medication every day and prefers that I administer it. This really is none of your business. He came to me for his blue medication. I gave him blue medication. Mary is a trusted assistant. As far as I know, she's completely above board. Today, she swept the shop and prepared some medications. She also fetched herself an apple from the apple stand. I see him here every day. He can be unpleasant, but I don't really know him. extra thruppence. She had a special app just for Mr. Ashton. I gave him that one when he come by. Mr. Ashton did look strange like. Eyes all yellowish and then he turned pale after he bit into the apple. Almost green really. seller to give him a special apple. Is that a crime? He was a horrid man. That's all I have to say. I'm not that clever with poisons. It's pure luck that I'm the one that killed him. Very 
very well. I found out about his dalliance with that girl from the pharmacy. It's not the first. Divorce is all but impossible given his influence with the clergy. I'll be the toast of the town. A very unpleasant fellow. But what was that business about a knighthood ceremony? Up to the clink with you! In any case, Mr. Raymond will have a story for Perlock Publishing. Someone help! Some trap found something down there! Looks like foul play! I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. I heard a splash 
and right quick pulled this bloke out of the shallows. Dead as a mackerel. The midnight train, that must be the 616, stops in the station down the road. If you hurry, it might still be there. I live there now, if you can call it living. I lost my job, didn't I? No need for the likes of me when a machine can do the work. A nice warm coat like that on a dead man? What do you expect? I snatched it before somebody else came along to nick it. Like you. Better hurry, it's leaving right now. I've seen this. I should ask more questions. Nothing unusual at all. I had a drink of some gents and then retired to my sleep. The rich fella. I did talk with him. Very charming. But a single woman has to be careful, you know. Did something happen to him? Oh, all right. I flirt with rich blokes and the barman slips them a mickey. I take them back to my sleeper and they nod off before I have to do anything shameful. They wake up thinking they had a night of fun and had me a few quid. That's what happened with Mr. Killian, but he was gone when I come back from looking for the man who left the note.
Mr. Wolf had a few with Mr. Killian. Then the young lady invited herself over to have a glass with him. Mr. Wolf became terribly tired, even though he'd only had one drink. He toddled off to bed well before midnight. I stayed in the dining car for a few drinks with the barman. Mr. Wolf bought him drink after drink. Then they got angry. But a young lady come over, and it's obvious that Mr. Killian was interested in a rendezvous like. Around about 11.30, Killian and her left together. I had drinks in the dining car with Killian. We had business dealings in the past. It was a pleasant surprise to discover him on this train. I felt unusually tired and came back here to get some sleep. Sam, he's a trusted valet. He's terrifically strong, which makes him useful in many a situation. I suppose there were some disagreements, but there always are when a great deal of money is involved. You mean the young lady? She and Killian hit it off famously. Embarrassing, really. I've been Mr. Wolf's valet for going on several years. He's frail and needs a man like me to help him about. passenger car. Around midnight, Vivian ran through. She thought someone was looking for her. She rides the train often. She's very friendly with the other passengers. Just another wealthy passenger. They're all pretty much the same. Oh, my God. 
Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. It was a typical evening. I, 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 I was tidy. Just enough. friendly with the other passengers. I gave him what he deserved. The man was heartless. I believe something larger is afoot. A lot of murder is happening concerning industrialists. There might be something to look into. Up to the cliff with you.
My dear friend, the Ghost Club has an extraordinary case for you. Spiritualist Thaddeus the Amazing has predicted his own death at his next seance. Could you have a look? Light the lamps! Oh, he's actually dead. I should return and find out about this. Nothing but a showman, really. Each week he gave a seance with all his clients present together. So many people makes everything much more dramatic. I attend Lady Ursula at these sessions. She's ailing and needs someone to help her along. I have no particular belief in an afterworld, but if it comforts my lady, I see no harm. I sought him out after the death of Mittens. Mittens is my beloved kitty cat. She was run over by a milk wagon several weeks ago. I've been trying desperately to contact my sweet thing ever since. I'm not well, though, and likely haven't long to live myself. I was so hoping to hear from my loved one. I'm convinced Thaddeus could have communicated Mittens' wishes to me. I must know to whom Mittens wishes that I should leave my fortune. And now Thaddeus is lost to us. I shall never know. This is so frustrating. I had a simple question, but have had to come back for seance after seance, week after week. Each time Thaddeus divined a partial number from the other side, but never the entire correct number. Today, he promised that I would get everything. Thaddeus felt that if I signed some papers, it would demonstrate to my dead father that I had absolute trust in Thaddeus.
I have no doubt that his powers were genuine. He was able to tell me of my daily comings and goings and all manner of details that he couldn't possibly have known. He certainly was going to be able to put me in contact with my sister. I've been coming here to decide whether I should accept a marriage proposal. Thaddeus had been attempting to contact my departed sister so that she could give me advice. Thaddeus was a kind man who sincerely wanted me to make the best choice. Now what am I to do? I'm so sorry to lose Thaddeus. The oddest part is that he claimed all would be revealed to each of us before his death. He was an incredible psychic. I came to clarify some uh, personal financial matters. He was an incredible psychic. I don't understand what happened. He foretold his own death, but I didn't expect it to happen like this. My brother has become obsessed with some secret bank account. He inherited almost all of my father's fortune, as well he should as the male heir, but some was locked in a secret account. I think it unlikely that it should be a significant amount. Power of attorney to a psychic? That sounds very unusual indeed. I went along to the seances a couple of times. I thought it was a waste of my brother's time.
I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. Never trust a man who tells you what you want to hear. He's after something. Taking advantage of my daughter's love for her departed sister. With that charlatan gone, things can get back to normal. My daughter's engagement to Everett Boyd can be announced at last. Janice's eldest sister was strong-willed. Janice always followed her lead. That's why it's so sad that she asked for advice, even in death. Time for Janice to think for herself. I know what's best for her. A girl of Janice's age should be married. Everett is a very sensible Sir. young man from a good family. He'll be very successful, I'm sure of it. father mentioned this swindler to me. I understand it's because of him that my engagement has been delayed. I know the owner of a local brewery, and I'm convinced his business will flourish. He just needs some financial backing. Now Janice is free to be married at last. I'll invest my dowry in the brewery and make a fortune. Janice is a lovely creature. I would be honoured were she to accept my proposal. I do so adore her. This city needs to be better taken care of. I say, I pass you to Mr. Stanley. That's me. Yeah, some fella come by here every so often. Yeah. Gives me a silver sixpence if I tell him everything about the folks in that house. Nothing unusual about him. Just a regular fella. I've seen him go into that building over there.
I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. Psychic was going to expose me, but I was nowhere near the crime scene. I just had these trousers clean. Everyone's got to think I'm a tramp. It ain't fair. Look. Oh. Bloody great. The man was a fraud, and I'm glad he's dead. But someone in my position does not commit murder. I think someone paid Thaddeus to tell my lady that a cat wanted them to inherit. Well, that would be quite a clever scheme indeed. I simply do not believe it. And if you're implying that my butler was paying Thaddeus, I must ask you, why would a great psychic do the bidding of a common butler? Hmm? My own sister! Paying Thaddeus off? I thought he was a bit too insistent that I sign that paper. Well, Anne is going to get a good talking to, believe you me. You believe that Everett paid Thaddeus to manipulate me? It cannot be true. Thaddeus knew all of my comings and goings. He genuinely could communicate with the world beyond. Lord, you found the office? I admit it, then. Thaddeus and I traveled the world, bamboozling the gullible and then exposing the swindle. But his death was meant to be a fake. I have no reason to want Thaddeus dead. Quite the contrary. Why would I kill him? He and I had a good clock going. We fooled people, but the people who paid most dearly were the thieves. I 
honestly had no idea that Thaddeus was cheating me. He must have been a very shrewd character to fool a sharp fellow like me. He was going to reveal my plot. He paid the price for betraying a fellow crook. This Thaddeus fellow was rather too clever by half. But you pieced it all together very cleverly. Mr. Raymond was particularly interested in this one. He admired the duplicity of Thaddeus. There has been a murder at the palace. I need you to be careful with this one. Anti-royalist pamphlets have been cropping up and tensions are high. The queen is very nervous about security. This way. Here we are. Good. I wonder if someone could tell me more about this. Now that I've seen this, I should ask more questions. Please, leave the room for a moment. No one is permitted to see me open the safe. Tonight's event. Oh, thank heavens! It is a 
even touched. The poor man. I arrived to find him here, dead as you see him. He gave his life to defend my person. This evening, I will knight several industrialists that have worked to end the practice of child labor. All of London's luminaries are invited. Only I know the combination. The vault contains the very precious scepter with the dove, which I've chosen to be used in tonight's knighthood ceremony. I should return and find out about this. Or oh, he's been all in a state. Think there's some sort of master criminal on the loose. Then this morning, he's gone. Come to think of it, he had been going on about the Queen and all for the last day or two. Seemed to think she was in some sort of trouble. He said he was onto something. 
said everything added in clues. I did see Artie's friend, Mr. Raymond. He'd just come from Pearl Art Publishing with his new Penny Dreadful. Seemed very excited about it. I never liked him much. You know, when he thought something was important, he'd write it up in invisible ink. No. Lemon juice like. He'd use smoke to read it. If you have a way to make smoke, you can see what it says. He's planning an explosion at the palace. It must be evacuated. Fine, girl. There's at least a hundred people here for the knighthood ceremony. The Queen will use the scepter with the dove for the knighthood. She'll arrive precisely at one o'clock. 
Why is nothing happening? Nothing? What's going on? I've been tricked! Raymond! Why has he done this? <coughs> you are more naive than you appear. Look beyond the obvious, beyond surface appearances. <laughs> Nothing but a showman. So many people makes everything more... Dramatic. Seems to me you've created the perfect diversion, haven't you? You've helped me herd all those dreary people to certain death. We shall hear the explosion presently. I found the same clues you found. I knew there was to be an explosion and I led you here to save everyone. I'm as mystified as you are that nothing happened. Quite right. I brought him his invitation to the knighthood ceremony, the one with the special scepter.
Never trust a man who tells you what you want to hear. He is after something. While you were chasing all those people around, I absconded with the Queen. A hefty ransom is now due. I needed you to distract everyone so that I could quietly assassinate Her Majesty the Queen. A man like me can take anything he wants. Even the Queen's most beloved item of all her crown jewels. The priceless and symbolic scepter with the dove. The scepter with the dove taken with your help. What could better display my genius? No one questions you when you wear a uniform. I suspect the solution will turn on geometry. I am a fellow of many skills. Cracking a safe is but one. I simply watched the Queen open the safe when you arrived. I threatened the Queen with her very life. She told me the combination in a thrice. That wouldn't make a very good story. Something more dramatic. I could never bring myself to harm that old biddy. Quite right. The dead guard was I. The spider venom allowed me to fake my death. I had a perfect view from where I lay. I have stolen the Queen's most prized possession. The scepter with the dove. Think of it. I have outfoxed you. The most cunning detective in Britain. I mocked you by leaving clues for you at every turning point. Now I have the scepter. Proof positive of my superiority. Jacob! Wake up! It's Raymond! He's taken Artie hostage! They're on the roof! Evie's here to help you, Jacob! Don't worry, Jacob. He won't know it's coming.
I suppose this means our detective days are over. But what about you, Artie? I'm glad I survived Mr. Raymond's insanity, but sadly he won't be here anymore to write more books. A great loss, I'm sure. I'm quite serious, Miss Evie. Me and my friends waited every week to read the next number and find out what happened next. Why don't you write some yourself? A fellow would have to be very clever indeed. Sounds like you'd be in your element, my dear. The gruesome Whitechapel murders by Artie. I should think I would use my full name by Artie Conan Doyle. But he's Arthur. Sounds more of a serious fellow. Thank you. 